Amen. I have two big parts of the text today. I don't know if I'll be able to get to all of it. I'm really struggling as to where to begin. But let's begin with Daniel chapter 4. And I am going to talk to you today. I'm going to give you another. You know, um, there's a lot of natural ways that they treat mental, mental health challenges. I'm going to give you a kingdom way. And a kingdom way means it's going to be a spiritual uh, treatment in nature, right? It's going to be something that's, that's spiritual, and it's much more, much more powerful. So I don't know. How many of you guys have read the book of Daniel? You read that one. Okay, so let me read. For, if you haven't, it's okay. I'm jumping right into the middle of a story. Uh, King Nebuchadnezzar is about to lose his kingdom. But there's something in here that I want to show you. Uh, verse 28 says, that all this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar, and at the end of the 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. The king spoke, and he said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? Boy, he's making a lot of mistakes right there. So just pay attention to this now. Now, so the first thing that I'm showing you is, he has built a great but alternate kingdom to God's kingdom. And he has done it, and he's claiming credit for it. And he has given himself, you know, a pat on the back, kudos to himself. And look at what happens. Now, he says, uh, verse 31 says, while the word was still in his mouth. I mean, he didn't get the word out good. While it was still in his mouth, a voice fell from heaven. My God. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken, the kingdom has departed from you. At the moment he spoke over himself that he was so amazed at what he had done and it had been done in his mighty power and this great kingdom and great system that he had built, all of a sudden the king of heaven spoke and said, I have just taken the kingdom from you. In an instant he lost it. He built this great thing controlled it all, was at the pinnacle of his rulership, and the king of heaven spoke, and he lost it in an instant. The nations of the world better beware. I'm telling you now, it can be gone just like that. That's not really my point today, but let's keep reading. Verse 32, And they shall drive you from men, and your dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and they shall make you eat grass like oxen. And seven times shall pass over you. That means seven years or seven er seasons. They don't know if it's years or whatever, but they usually translate it as years. So seven years, let's call it, shall pass over you until you know or understand. Somebody say healthy mind. Until you, let me translate it that way. Until you have a healthy mind. Until you know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men. My goodness. And gives it to whomever he chooses. That very hour, verse 33, the word was fulfilled concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men and ate grass like the ox, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hair had grown like eagles' feathers and his nails like birds' claws. He has been, he's now been reduced to a beastly state. From a royal, just look at the transition, from a ruler to a beast. From a ruler to a beast. What was the difference of ruler and beast? I'm going to show you. And then at the end, I, Nebuchadnezzar, verse 34, I lifted my eyes to heaven and my understanding returned to me. Then I blessed the Most High and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Before I jump into this, I want to just point out one quick thing. The difference in being mad or having mental health problems is your understanding of the kingdom. The Bible says that he lost his understanding, meaning he showed it, right? He said, this belongs to me. I did this. He doesn't understand that the kingdom rules from generation to generation to generation, meaning even though he was in power in, in the time of Babylon, God had never lost control or rulership. What had happened is Nebuchadnezzar has now rebelled against the Most High, has taken the glory from himself, and the difference in being in a good mental health position and being mad and being in a beast-like state is simply an understanding of how the kingdom works. He went from ruling it all 
to being in a beast-like state. Now, I got to tell you, this is what's happening in the world today. This is what's happening. Men are becoming more like beasts and less like rulers. Living off of the ground. Living off of the ground. What's the difference in him eating grass and us thinking salads will save our life? You get what I'm saying? Look, we went from rulership and dominion over the earth to relying on everything else to keep it going. Now the earth dominates man. And you see the difference now. He is now living as a beast being dominated by the earth. What was the difference? He said, my understanding left me. I started acting like it was just me independent of God. I ignored the rulership of God that lasts from generation to generation to generation. And here's the thing. So we're going to get a little deeper as we go. Is that okay? Can I? Because I'm going to get deeper as we go. We're reading something easy now. But hopefully you brought something to take notes with because as you know, I love to teach. Amen. Amen. And at the end, hopefully I'll get to something that is a spiritual treatment to a, to a mentality that needs some restoration. One thing I want you to write down first is that the mind of God is not the mind of men. The mind of God, I know that's a simple statement, but I want to maybe make it uh, more plain to you. This means that God doesn't think on earthly terms. God's mind is not filled with the same things that our minds is filled with. God's mind is different than ours. The Bible says his ways are not our ways and his uh, thoughts are not our thoughts. In fact, it's higher, he says. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's thoughts above our thoughts and all of that. You know what I'm talking about. So this is the first thing. Try to understand this is that God's mind is not looking at things the way you're looking at it. Also, in turn, when God sent Jesus to the earth, Jesus was not looking at a situation the way the people in the situation was looking at it. And God is not looking at your situation or the country situation or your personal stuff or your business stuff. He's not looking at it the same because his mind prevents him from looking at it like you. So this is what you got to understand. The worldview that you possess controls the way you see it. It doesn't necessarily give you a truth, uh, a, a true statement of what the way it is. It's just the way you perceive it, and it's completely subjective. That's a dangerous thing because that means that you can get different information and see things wrongly, and then it could, and then that thing will be used wrongly and operate and react to you wrongly. Amen. So somebody say, God's mind is not like mine. Because God, see, he only, listen, all, the only information in God's mind is kingdom information. Let me say it this way. The only information in God's mind is truth. Kingdom is also known as truth. Kingdom is known as truth. The only information in God's mind is original creation. That's truth. What is truth? Original information. Everything that comes after original information is either confirmation of original information or it's twisted or corrupted information. But there is no place. Lies do not come from a land called the land of lies. Lies are simply you take a truth and you twist it. A lie is nothing. It's a truth. You twist it. So you have to have truth to even have a lie. Because a lie is not a thing. A lie is taking a truth and twisting it. And sickness is a lie. You have to have a healthy truth to take it and twist it in order for sickness to even exist. Sickness has to exist on the foundation of a truth. So that means you take a truth and you twist it. Poverty is not a truth because it doesn't come from original information. It doesn't emanate from the kingdom of God. It's not in God's mind. It's not in his concept. And it certainly doesn't come out of him. So earth takes God's information of prosperity and they twist it and you get poverty. Having an unhealthy mind is not a thing. An unhealthy mind is where you take a healthy mind and you put a bunch of stuff on top of it and you twist it. And now the healthy mind is now just a twisted mind and we call it unhealthy mind. In fact, worry is not a thing. Worry is just evidence that you have a sane mind. Because worry is not a thing. If worry is a thing, where does it come from? Well, if God created everything, then worry couldn't have came from his mind. Is this too deep already? Because we treat things that are harming us as if they're real things instead of untwisting and hitting it with the truth. So Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. He didn't tell us to get on the battlefield. 
He didn't tell us to pick up weapons and get out on the battlefield and fight the enemy that way. He said you need to restore your mind. Why? Because when you restore the mind, you literally pull the foundation. Your enemy is using your own guns against you. You know how the Taliban got our military weapons now? Now, if they shoot us with our own stuff, we don't say they got some new weapons, do we? We say they stole our stuff and used it against them. All right, so that's what happened to you. The enemy has taken over the systems. He operates the truth. He turns it. He twists it. He varies it a little. And we call it something new, and we call it evil. But evil is just twisted truth, or it's something that exists without the truth telling it what it is. Ooh, Lord have mercy. That ain't too deep, is it? God's mind is not like your mind. It only holds truth. So God doesn't look at the earth and see all the things we see. He hears what we see, and he says, what is that? He hears what we see. He sees where we go. He said, where are you? He says, I don't, these things that you have, where would you get that from? Adam said, I'm naked, and I was afraid. He said, who told you that? What is naked? <laughs> Ooh, I can see us stepping back into the kingdom. You see, we take things and we give it this dignity like it's a thing. Nakedness is a thing. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not a thing. We made it a thing. So God doesn't see it the way you see it. This is going to get deep. All right, so let's discover the kingdom solutions to mental health. You got that part so far. All right, so jot these points down. Let's see how fast I can get through this stuff. I'm trying to make it quick, but we'll see. <laughs> so God designed the world based on his own mentality and mental design. Again, God created everything, and he designed it. That means when he made it and designed it, it was perfect because he made it and designed it out of his own mind. That's why he calls it the kingdom or the dominion of the king, the mentality, the rulership, design, the authority of the king. A kingdom is a mental government that comes directly from one individual, and it's got his name in front of the government. So the dominion is from the king, and that's why we call it a king's dominion. Right? So it's the king's understanding of his own idea of government, creation, design, and life. He made it. That's important because every time you face a challenge, you look at it as if it's a thing and then you approach it as if it's a thing instead of approaching it from the position of did God even create this? What type of characteristics is this thing telling me it has? What kind of power is it proclaiming to have over me? And if it does have that power, who gave it that power? Let me go back and check the king's dominion and see what kind of power we gave this type of thing. And as I check the original manual on what has power, the manual says that only Jesus had power. And then it says he delegated the same power to me and he gave me the same dominion. That means he designed, if you're understanding what I'm saying, he designed everything by his own mind. What he understands about how he wants it to work. So God gave everything he created, its limitations, its characteristics, its specific nature, and its distinctions. That creates a special order, and that's a healthy mind. So God made it, and this is what he did when he put us in it. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 5. Man, I can feel this thing coming on me now. I'm going to teach. Hebrews 2, verse 5. Now, he's talking about how he made it, right? So, for he put the world to come, of which we speak, in subjection to angels. But one testifies in a certain place, saying... What is man that you are mindful of him? Say healthy mind. What is mind? What do you think of him? And how did you design him to be cared for and operate? What is man that you are mindful of him or the son of man that you take care of him? You've made him a little lower than the angels. I don't have time to deal with that. It's not a correct translation. That word is Elohim in the Bible. Little lower than yourself. So the original Hebrew translators didn't want to put that in there because they are afraid of putting the, that man and God are next to each other. So they use the word angels. But also angels, by the way, in the book of Revelations is another word for a preacher. So you can translate it either way you want to, but the word in Hebrew is Elohim, which is God. God made man, and then you were right there. Not angels because we judge angels. So angels are not above you. 
Angels, do your bidding. I said that straight already. That's the word in, in the Hebrew. Okay, so you have what now what, watch what he did. Watch his design, how you operate. You have crowned him with glory and honor. Set him over the works of your hands. And put all things, next verse, all things in subjection under his feet or rule. For he, okay, I'm going to leave right there. Go back one. So everything is under your feet, right? Everything under your feet does not mean stomp, stomp, stomp on the devil. It's under my feet. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Boy, you go to church and people are like, put him under your feet. Bum, 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 bum. Let me tell you what that really means. You can stomp all you want to and the devil kick your tail all week long. Let me tell you what this really means. And this is why we have to get back to the right idea of the, of the kingdom. Because it says, you have crowned him with glory and honor, set him over the works of your hands. This means when God says, I crowned him, this means that I put him inside of another dominion and gave him authority. The crown represents authority over something that already has rules and government for it. When you see a king receive a crown, there's two things that happen. One, that's the transfer of authority. Two, that is the... That is the announcement that they have a dominion or a territory assigned to them but the only thing that you can't do with that new territory is you can't change the government that's there that's already established so now you go look at the now i'm just explaining this so good now you go rule over the work of his hand in his design you have the crown but he designed it you have to rule earth just like he designed it to be ruled, which means you have to have the same understanding of how the thing operates if you're going to operate it correctly because it's under your rulership now or feet or influence. Do you see why it's important to have the same mind? So God's mind is different. He thinks kingdom. He only sees truth. He only understands truth. He only knows what he created and how it functions. And so he says, I have given man that same dominion, authority, and rulership, which makes all earthly governments, though God is using them, but he used Babylon to correct Israel many times and pull them into captivity. God uses the evil governments, puts them on his own payroll to uh, chastise the people of God. So all earthly governments are unnecessary, number one, and they're illegitimate. That God didn't make them, but God says, well, since you made that, then you'll be ruled by your own, um, your own governments until you come back to the kingdom. So these governments and the economies they design and the education systems they design, guess what they're designed to do? They're designed to take rulers and make them beasts. And that's okay because Nebuchadnezzar was under the hand of God when he went from ruler to beast. That was part of the design until he came to his understanding and said, you are the most high. You are creator of heaven and earth and your dominion is an everlasting dominion. That means this government never, ever goes away. You said, but look at the countries and the nations. They have their own governments. My home has its own government. My job has its own government. God said, that doesn't matter. My government is still ruling and reigning. Until we acknowledge it, it won't bless us. So your mind is filled with all of these other concepts and ideas of what government is. And therefore, we get the result that we get, and we're operating more so like beasts than rulers. So when all the things come out in the world and we get, you know, uh, excited about it, when the governments come up with new ideas and laws, just understand that these are not the laws of God. These are not, this is not how God intended you to operate. In fact, when God created man in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, he gave, the Bible said he made him in his own image and likeness and gave him the same dominion or the keys to the kingdom, the same mind that God had. He shared his authority with him because it was Adam's job to never, never become part of the earth system but to manage and rule all that God created. So earth is under the bondage of a carnal system, and man is under the bondage of a carnal system. So it's really impossible to go to school, get an education, any of those things, and ever become who you are. It's impossible because they don't know how the kingdom works, so they can never teach it to you. And that's why God put an authorized dealer on the earth that has the, the, um, the teacher of the kingdom. We call him the Holy Spirit abiding in it that is the teacher and the guide into all truth and that place is called the church the ecclesia this is the only place you can learn how the kingdom works 
This is the only authorized dealer that has the Holy Spirit. And then you are supposed to take this and go out there and change those systems back into the kingdom. Because they have been hijacked by carnal men. People with unhealthy minds. Are y'all still here? Woo, let me keep going. That was my first point. Hallelujah. I'm going to go quick. Are y'all taking notes? All right. The mind of the king is the only healthy mind because it knows how his creation works. I've established that. So that means because God knows how he made it and how it works, God never actually worries. God never stresses. God's never confused about how to make progress. God's never confused about how to supply your needs. God's never confused about how to be productive. God's never confused about how to give you a royal life on the earth. He's never confused. Why? Because he only thinks about his own design the way he made it. He never takes advice from us. This is important to understand because when the Bible talks about how like the meaning of life and the earth, God created man to rule over what God made. He, did never, he never created man to come back to heaven and be a part of what God is doing in heaven. God was expanding heaven into another realm we call the seen realm or earth, and he wanted man to rule the earth just as he ruled the heavens. And that's why Jesus said, pray like this, thy kingdom come on the earth just as it is where? In heaven. So God's never worried because he understands the design and he is not fooled by the governments of men. He's not confused by that. Okay? So think about this now. The mentality or the mind of your life, it houses every part of your life. So the mind is so important to understand that we get a kingdom understanding in our minds because it controls all of your thinking. You know, thinking is not, it's hard to understand what what is thinking. Thinking is simply reflection. Thinking is, is an exercise done by what you are focusing on. So thinking is, I'm edifying myself or I am, I'm engaging or consuming something. I'm reflecting on it. I'm thinking about it. I'm remembering it. And the mind controls all of your life by thinking. So whatever you are thinking on and whatever system you are thinking through gives you the result you call your life. So you simply have to change what you understand to get a different result. The mind controls everything. It controls your thinking, your decisions. It distinguishes what is a true truth from what is a lie. It even controls all of your feelings. They come from your mind. They do not come from the body. They come from the mind. The mind controls the feelings. Every doctor will tell you that. The pain sensories do not come from your mind. They come through your feelings. I mean, your, they, they don't come through your body. They come through your mind. So when you have pain in the body, the body didn't feel the pain. The mind told the body you needed to have pain there. This is how you know, because if you get in a car accident and you sever that communication point, you will no longer feel pain. So you know it doesn't come from the body because that sense left as soon as you cut off the mind. So if you cut off God's mind from your life, you can never feel what heaven is like or experience it or operate in it or think about it or have decisions in it. If you cut off the mind of God, you can never operate the kingdom of God on the earth. Because if you sever that mind or cut yourself off from that mind, you can't feel it, taste it, sense it, or smell it, or anything. You can't even think on it. You can't even make decisions based on it. So every time you look at your life, your challenges, your money, your kids, whatever is holding um, you, you captive in worry, you have this carnal mind trying to work it out. And that's more stress and more worry. And you're operating in a, in a place of stress because you have disconnected yourself from your true source. This is how the kingdom works. Are you all good? So the mind controls every part of that. So if you want to feel what heaven is like, you're not supposed to have to die to go there to feel it. This is where the kingdom of God starts separating itself from religion. Religion tells you God wants you to come to heaven to feel better. Woo, I'm preaching already. You ain't saying nothing. Religion ultimately, even your best kingdom preachers out there, they ultimately tell you your destination is heaven. But Jesus says the destination is earth. What was on God's mind when he made Adam? Let me ask you a question. If your destination was heaven, if Adam had never sinned, if Adam had never sinned, would God be trying to get you back to heaven? So then that means what was on his mind originally was not us coming here for a break and coming back to heaven, but it was really the expansion of his kingdom and his glory covering the earth as the waters covers the sea. 
In other words, God's not interested in you coming back to do nothing for him in the clouds. God is interested in making you like him on the earth. And that is not in your Bible to come back to heaven. That is not in the Bible. The Bible starts with God creating a man, putting him on the earth, giving him dominion. Then Jesus comes back and says, you lost the dominion, Adam, but I'm here to give it back to you. Why? So you can get back to your original assignment, which is expanding the kingdom of God and that lifestyle across this seen realm forever and ever. Can I keep going or did I already lose you? Amen. All right. So the, king, the mind of the king then governs every aspect of his kingdom. This is what you have to understand. And when he shares his mind, his ideas, and his counsel with uh, Adam, he is essentially expanding his kingdom to other territories. Now, here's something very important about kingdom expansion. I hope I didn't lose you yet. Write this down in your paper. Kingdom expansion. This is, this is one thing you have to understand. You can't expand the kingdom unless the person that is doing the expanding has the exact ideas that the king has. Foreigners cannot expand a country. They have to have the original idea of the country or what you're going to get is a mixture of a bunch of different carnal thinking trying to create something else. Kingdoms expand like this. You have a kingdom. The kingdom is the original idea. Now, you have a new territory over here that you want to put that kingdom in. That means I want to put everything in this country. I want to make it duplicated in this country. Now, in order for me to get everything in this country into this country, I want it to be seen in two locations. So we call it, um, you know, the United States. But when they were forming the United States, there was places in the United States called, so we had England. And then we had another one called New England. This just means it's England in a new place. And then they called the original England the old country or the mother country. Because this is the parent of the dependent or the colony. Now what they wanted, now what they did is they loaded up the ships with all of the cultural and, and, and um, all the distinctions of the original country. They put them in ships under the control of people from the original country. And they sent people from the original country to go to the new location with the same mind and the same resources so they could build the same thing that's over here and build it over here. It had to match. And the goal of life is not to make money. It's to match. The goal of life is not to be successful by earth. You know, people that have money, sometimes they're way off of their assignment. People that are working a job, making a good living, sometimes they're just doing what earthly people do. And they went through the system and they got a degree. And that's really the only thing. And they give God the praise and they are far from what God asked them to do. So, so I used to teach our, our leaders here. I said, what, what is kingdom success? And if I can make it as basic with my little squares as I can, kingdom success is that the dimensions over here in the kingdom, and we'll call this the earth, that they are exactly the same. Success is just match. Duplication. That is success. In fact, the definition of success means to follow. When you think of success, you think of jobs and money and things like that. In a kingdom, if you say the word success, you're also saying successor, which indicates a person and indicates a new territory that follows the original one exactly how it is in this country. Jesus said, I want it to operate on earth just as it is in heaven. And that's what you pray. Stop praying about groceries and stop praying about your body and stop looking for this and that because that's why you worry. I am losing my amens up in this church. That is success. Success literally means to follow exactly. So if you follow the earth system, you are not following the kingdom. Whoo, hallelujah. The kingdom expands by taking. Now, there's only one person. Okay, so follow me here. Now, God sent a community to the earth to, 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 um, to perform this work. Yeah, Adam and Eve, they were the first community. 
And he said, now, out of your loins, Adam, I want you to duplicate yourself, but stay in the kingdom or the Garden of Eden. Stay under this environment. Stay in my presence. And I want you to, from there, I want you to multiply. That means to make the same thing over and over again. Multiply means you have one thing and it's just over and over the same thing. Multiply, multiply. Mul so you can't change the thing. You have to multiply. See, we've changed the thing. Changing something is not multiplication. Multiplication literally means I didn't change it. I just grew it. Y'all don't take math. Multiplication. I teach my, I taught my kid. Now, I'm not a mathematician, you understand. But multiplication to me was addition the short way. It's faster, it's faster addition is what it is. It's a, in other words, there's a different way to think about solving a problem. You do addition. God does multiplication. We make this thing too complicated. God said, stay like me, think like me, study on my word, understand the kingdom, and just do that over and over again. Well, Lord, I don't know this country and this government. I don't care what they're doing. You keep doing what I said you need to do during this time. Multiply. Are we still here? Now, here's the challenge, though. Here's the challenge. Okay, so God sends this man to the earth, and obviously he disconnects from the plan, and he goes for the knowledge, his mind, of good and evil. This means I want independent government uh, governance of what is good and what is evil. I'm going to go to reasoning in my own flesh and figure this out with my own abilities instead of following or multiplying what is in heaven on the earth. So Adam loses it. Now, when Adam lost it, he had a helper at the time, and this person that they called. Now, when they send, let's just say this is England, okay, because that's the most recent example I can use. And then this is America over here. So when they send this over here, they send a population of people that are from the home country. So that's Adam to earth, that's you to here. But they send them with another helper. Okay, so now, connected to these folks, boy, this, this illustration don't make no sense. But y'all get what, y'all follow me? So what's happening from the kingdom is they send another ruler from the kingdom, and he goes and lives in the territory with the people, and he is in charge of making sure they stay in truth. The Holy Spirit's job is not to make us go, <laughs> and we're still getting our butts kicked because we still believe lies. The Holy Spirit is the governor of the kingdom of God, and he sits and dwells with the people so that he can transform them or keep them as rulers the holy spirit is what kingdoms call the tutor or the governor or he is the one who keeps you and trains you in truth so the holy spirit is like a governor so this is what they do they send now first thing they have to do is they have to build a house that the governor has to live in now the governor's house cannot be built by the people that they are sending him to rule over because they don't understand what he likes. Y'all missing it? You missing it? See, see, earth can't build God a house. You, you can't construct a house in your mind or a place for God to dwell that God would feel comfortable in unless it's the Holy Spirit building that mentality in you. But here's the problem. The Holy Spirit don't know anything about earth and poverty and all this sickness stuff and all this stuff we're going through. He never went to your schools. He wasn't raised in your country, your culture, or your ethnicity. He has got his own heritage, his own inheritance, his own power, his own way of thinking. And he ain't trying to become like you. He's trying to make you like God. This is how the kingdom works. So the Holy Spirit comes and he dwells in you. But first, the house that he dwells in has to be made, not by man's hands or man's understanding, but it has to be reconstructed for him to feel comfortable. Because just like all people, when you go to another country, you're uncomfortable. But if they put you in a house built like yours and put you around food that's like yours, you start feeling like you're at home again and you're comfortable. So the idea was is that you have to make the Holy Spirit comfortable in your life so that he can rule over your life. And so what he does is he comes now and God through Jesus and the work on the cross, he reconstructs the house or makes it clean again. 
And so he wipes out all the things that used to be there, all the ideas. The Holy Spirit says, now at least the house is empty. I'll come back in, and I want to get started on reconstructing your mind. This is what we call in church repentance. Repentance is not saying you're sorry every, every week but still studying earth systems or s- hanging around the people that teach you these earthly ideas of who you are, these cultures, these, these gurus, these crowds you hang with, or these people you talk to at work. No, you have to separate yourself completely from all of that, and repentance is now where me and the Holy Spirit are getting an understanding of who I really am, and he is reconstructing. He brings the resources with him, and he is reconstructing my identity. So far, so good. That clock is a liar, I'm telling you. (laughs) Now I'm watching this other clock. Okay. I'm already preaching. So no other philosophy and no other theory of influence should govern mankind, our cities, our families, because we call that division. When you have more than one person giving you a picture, more than one vision... That's called division. So if the Holy Spirit is not the one you call truth, and maybe your feelings, your senses, or your background, or whatever is in your memory, because your memory is the unhealthy part of you, but your, but your mindset from the origin of God's memory is the real you. Your memory only goes back to when you were born. God's memory goes back before you were born. I formed you, fashioned you. I, 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 he said, I, I, I weaved you together, even your, the intricate parts of your life and your inside. He said, I put it all together so perfectly before you ever had an idea of how it worked. Before you had an idea about how to confuse yourself, about how to take care of yourself. <laughs> he said, I already established this already, way, way before you got here. Okay. So. The Holy Spirit now is the integral part of kingdom expansion because he is not from the earth and he is not trained in the earth and his mind does not accept anything that comes from the earth as far as information goes. He is here to only do one thing, give. He doesn't receive anything from you. Give him a house and he gives. Why why does he give? Because he's perfect. He doesn't need anything. So the more you become like God, the more you give. The more you realize I have everything, the more you give. The less you realize I have everything, the more you try to hoard and keep. Because I have to make sure I'm well. And like Brother Richard was saying earlier, I got this inkling that there's a different system. And so even though it it kind of made my money tight for a second, I had to realize that I actually do have it. I do have it. So let me go on ahead and move this from here to here because God already knew I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to make sure that's taken care of. I just need you to believe that that's true. So give. Hallelujah. So we don't want die vision or more than one vision. So he has a holy mind and a healthy mind. So, again, in the kingdom of God, God's trying to expand everything over here to over here. The Holy Spirit is the key. And he has, since he is the holy spirit then what kind of mind does he have he has a holy mind and do you remember what that word meant a holy mind is a whole mind a saved mind okay and we just now are going to sum that up in one word that is the kingdom mind the most valuable thing you could ever have is a kingdom mind Because that is a whole mind, a holy mind, a clean mind, a pure mind, a mind without division, a mind without conflict or strife with God's law. Okay? And so this is how God built it. But now we have this idea like Nebuchadnezzar where we're going to do our own governing and our, because we're afraid that if we don't set up something, we're not going to make it. So what mankind does now in our cleverness is we come up with amazing things in technology to help bridge the gaps for things that we don't really uh, want to do the same way anymore. We want to make it easier because ultimately we're trying to make life better. And so, for example, and this is not, I'm not knocking anything. This is just the, pro- the progression of life. But currently, instead of a Holy Spirit giving us a healthy mind, now we have people like... Um, which, which again is not a knock, but uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and he is basically getting ready to try to take over the whole world. He's a dropout from Harvard, which then, uh, okay, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just pointing out he did go to earthly schools. 
Okay, so the Holy Spirit doesn't go to Harvard. So he doesn't have that, 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 that um, mindset that uh, Mark Zuckerberg might have. And he creates and he's designing this thing called the metaverse, which means it's an alternate world. That's what it literally means, alternate world. And he is going to, who's going to design what goes into the alternate world? He's going to design it in his team. And are those people from heaven? Are they, do you think they're Holy Ghost filled? Do you think they're praying in tongues? Do you think they're sitting in the room going, let's see what God would put in this alternate augmented reality? No, but let me tell you what it does do. What it is going to do, if you're not careful, is it's going to deepen your connection to your emotional brain. Because think, this is what I'm telling you. They control you through your emotions. So what virtual reality and AI are going to attempt to do is deepen the connection that you have with your emotional self. Not your spirit, but your emotional self. So when they put the, now this is how it works. When they put the headset on you, it takes over the senses. That's how you run your life anyway. So if they got your senses, they got your life. And that is going to intensify like never before. Mental health is going to go to such an all-time low that people are going to become so robotic that they will follow any foolishness that people say. And God's sitting here claiming that you are a divine being made in his image and likeness, but you're going to be so terrified of your senses that you're going to say, I will do anything not to have fear. I will do anything not to feel trembles. I will do anything not to imagine my life without certain things. I will do anything to secure my emotions. Because they're going to take over your emotions. You're going to put that on. They're going to convince you that you can go into all of these different environments with just thinking about it or just clicking a button or some kind of way, some vocal command or something. And the goal, I'm just telling you now, is to make you more human-like, more worried, more fearful, and more afraid because ultimately they want to control you. This is not about making life better. Here's another word they're using. I'm just telling on everything today. Here's another word that they are using. They are using the word teleport. Now, teleport, I used that a long time ago. And people are like, Jesus teleported. I'm like, you about to be teleporting. Except for their teleporting is going to be fake teleporting. And you could be in the kingdom and really do it. Yes, I lost my amen. A few of y'all, it's a few of y'all with me. But when you put that headset on, you're going to be talking to your friends. What'd you teleport today? You are. That's exactly what you're going to say. The language is going to come. It's going to be a normal thing. And we have been doing this in the kingdom forever. And while you think that is spooky and weird, you are about to be doing it. It'll be fake. If your, if your battery in your headset dies, it's gone. Now, you can't kill the kingdom. That don't turn off. But we will just let that take over the ruling of our lives instead of the kingdom of God. So this is how I'm telling you, it's going to connect you so tightly to your emotions that you are going to be a slave to your nerves. And mostly people are now anyway. But it's going to lock you in a place where you are just so terrified. Amen. So let me get to two different points before I let you out of here. I got seven minutes. Give me seven minutes, you guys. 1130. Are y'all still good? I can't leave you on teleporting. You didn't think we'd be talking normally about teleportation. But in five years or less, you're going to prefer teleporting, shopping, to even Amazon. They're, they're mentally conditioning you so that you never, you become more beast-like and more robotic than you've ever been. So, the same thing with artificial intelligence, it's the same thing. It's just another tool. Now, these things can be used. It's not that, that they can't be used. The issue is, is that people that are healthy in their minds can use them. People that are just carnal, human, regular, or average, everyday person is going to be dis destroyed and dominated by them. So Jesus came and he said, I have a different treatment because this is what they do. As soon as you uh, have a mental issue, 
They give you some sort of treatment, some sort of talk therapy, some sort of behavioral therapy, some sort of uh, medication, and something to get your mind to stabilize again. Or they say something to you on the news, you know, that'll try to calm you down after they tear everything up. Then they try to calm you down, and then they create diseases, and then they try to sell you the cure. That's just how it works. I mean, that's just how it works. God didn't make it, so we know. So the people that are creating it are also the people that are making the money on it. Whether it works or not, that's not the point. The point still is it's all controlled inside of an arena that is evil. This is not like God was like, um, dang, I messed up. You know, I actually created, I created everything good, but that one thing, it was poisonous, and now I need to make a medication to fix it. God ain't never made a mistake. He ain't never made a mistake. All right, so Jesus says, Matthew 6, 25 through 33. Let me show you this. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God. Now, this is not a natural remedy. Seek first the kingdom of God, and all of these things shall be added unto you. What is he saying? You have to get the mind of God again. Matthew 4, 17, what did he say? Repent because the kingdom is here. This implies that you have to, in order to repent, remember, is to get different information. So to repent, you got to have the Holy Spirit. You can't repent and read a book from your school. I mean, you can call, that is repenting. It's just repenting without the right information. So you're always repenting. As long as you're consuming information, you are repenting. You are returning to someone's foundation. That's what repentance is designed to do. So if you're studying kingdoms and God's kingdom in particular, you are returning to that state of being because the state of being is in your mind. So you will be able to have authority and operate on the things that you repent with. Now, the Holy Spirit is the teacher of the kingdom of God on the earth. So when you repent, you can't say you repent and you don't have the Holy Ghost. And I said I wasn't going to do this, but I am going to do it because I don't want to leave you. Let me give you today's treatment. Are you ready? Today's treatment has to do with the Holy Ghost. And most people can't do this. And most people don't do this, even if they can. And it's becoming a forgotten thing, but I'm going to write it down. So somebody say, speak in tongues. Now, let me get, get can, I, can I have just five or ten minutes on this? This is today's treatment. If you want a sound mind, if you want a calm mind, if you want a fellowship in truth, if you want to repent correctly, the most pure and powerful way to do it is to talk in your native language, which is tongues. Let me explain this to you because churches don't want to do this anymore and church people sitting there like, that's weird. Okay, that's weird. But let me explain this to you. It's no different than if I invite my wife on the stage right now and her, and her language is Lingala, which none of y'all speak except for maybe Ruth. Okay, she would be the only one that could understand that. Everyone else would say it's gibberish. But when people speak in tongues, if you have the Holy Ghost inside of you, it don't sound like gibberish to me. You just don't have an interpreter in your spirit, and that's why you think it's gibberish. Just like if you had the mind of a Congolese woman, and she started speaking Lingala to you, you would say, that makes perfect sense to me. And that language emanates from the country it was created. So tongues comes from heaven. Can I speed this up a little bit? So tongues has nothing to do with your earthly language. The Bible says that when you pray in tongues, you pray without your understanding. And so you don't pray in the language you were born into. When you get tongues, you have reconnected yourself to concepts, identities, and things that are giving you a robust understanding of who you really are. You cannot understand your capabilities, your capacities, or the laws of God if you don't speak in tongues. Paul said, listen, I want to talk. He said, tongue, he said, talking in tongues is superior. Then he said, but when people wander into your meetings that don't speak in tongues, sometimes you got to use understandings, but get them over to tongues as fast as you can. Because here's the problem with my natural language is that it has so much limitation. I'm trying to communicate a heavenly thing. I'm trying to pray a heavenly thing. I'm trying to get heaven onto the earth, but sometimes my language limits me. So when the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you, the first thing he gave the first church in the book of Acts, you should read it. In the book of Acts, the first thing that happened, they met together on one accord. And then the Bible says the spirit came and filled them with tongues. Why? Because when you move back to a country, as you're moving back to the kingdom today, when you move back, the first thing you have to learn is the language. 
Woo! Hallelujah. Let me I'm just, just write check mark right there. That's the Holy Ghost saying, that's correct, Pastor Mike. If you immigrated to this country and you didn't speak the language, what's the first thing you got to do to function here? You better join a school that teaches the language. That's why the church is here. Because we got to get the church back into speaking in tongues again. Because the power is limiting when I can't talk like God. I'm proud of it. I talk like God all the time. And I don't even know what I'm saying. Until he interprets it back to me, I don't know what happened. But I'm a vessel. I just let him talk through me, Lord. Go ahead. We hide the tongues. We don't want to know And we look, somebody beside us is like, oh, I don't want them to think I'm weird or something. You just don't speak what I speak. It's okay. I'm just not weird. And I'm, I'm summarizing a bunch of this, but if you want to read it for yourself, go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But let me just keep talking about this for a second. Hallelujah. I got to give you this. Church, why, 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 why do church people get away from tongues? It's weird. It's not weird when you think of heaven as a country and tongues as the native language. It's no different if you don't speak French and you move to France, you're going to have to go to school or get a teacher, and they're going to have to teach you French ideas. And the French ideas have to come, I mean, the French language have to come with an idea. So even if I speak the language, let's say I speak it in my understanding or I speak Lingala, my wife has a better understanding of the word even though I learned how to say the same word. She has a robust picture in her mind of what that means. So even when you say, I'm made in God's image and likeness, that was English. But if the Holy Ghost says, inside of you, your spirit just expands. You're like, who am I? How many of y'all speak in tongues in this church? Hallelujah. I pray in tongues. The Bible says pray in tongues, speak in tongues, talk to each other in tongues, pray to God in tongues, sing songs to each other, spiritual songs and spiritual hymns so you can edify and restore the kingdom of God on the earth. We will ne- if we don't get back to speaking in tongues, we will never be able to put the kingdom here. You go to God in your prayer life and you're praying in English, Lord, hallelujah. And listen, God's trying to work it out, but he speaks tongues. The concepts that you're uttering, he's trying to get there with you, but he wants you to understand it like he does. And you know what? When I speak in tongues, there ain't, there's no word in tongues that has anything to do with poverty. When you speak tongues, you ain't never talked about poverty. There is no word when I'm speaking in tongues about racism. There is no such concept. Because when I speak in tongues, I'm speaking my heavenly language, and we don't have those ideas. There's no such thing as poverty. Is anybody in here today? So if you are speaking in tongues, the Bible says you are praying over your understanding, meaning you're not, you're bypassing your brain, and now the Holy Ghost is praying through you. And he don't talk about what you talk about. And he don't pray the way you pray. He has a whole different look. I might have to do two weeks on tongues. In order for you to pray in tongues, you have to leave the natural realm. You have to leave natural understanding, natural education. You actually, when you start praying in tongues, you actually leave the natural and step into the kingdom. When you're lost, it's because you spend too much time in the natural and you need to get on your knees and say, God, give me my native language. Let me keep talking, please. Listen, I went to Brazil and I've prayed for many people for them to receive tongues because there's many ways you can receive it. I didn't have a prayer. I got it in a worship service. And you know what? People always ask me, Pastor Mike, how can I pray in tongues? How can I pray in tongues? I see everybody praying in tongues. How can I pray in tongues? And it's hard for me to explain this. I don't know how to explain it. All I know is the way I felt, the way it happened for me is that I lost complete sight of natural everything. When I was in worship, I was so engaged in God that I literally left the natural realm. In a worship service, as a matter of fact, if it's okay if I'm be weird for a second, I was running a lap around my church when I called it. I was literally running. I was running around the church, and I got to another part on the other side of the church, and I, start, I started to open my mouth and say hallelujah. And by the way, I was a brand new believer, so saying hallelujah was weird to me. I started to say hallelujah, and when I opened my mouth, I said hallelujah, and I was like, ugh. 
And then it just started flowing out like a river. I was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And the moment I got the power of speaking in tongues, I saw the Bible different. I saw the outside different. I saw human beings different. I saw myself different. So I don't know, but I went to Brazil and I had this, we had this pastor's meeting and we also had some college students there and we had probably a couple of hundred people in a room. We moved all the chairs out of the way and we had a Holy Spirit service, what we call it, being filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to bring people back to kingdom language, right? These kids, young people, young adults, they'd probably be mad if I said they were kids. These pastors and kids, they lined up in, in a circle and there was three pastors and we put them all in a circle. And I said, I'm a, new, I'm a new pastor now. So the older pastor was like, we're going to lay hands on all these people. You're going to receive the Holy Ghost. So just let go. We told them, don't try to speak in your native language. Don't, 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 don't just, you just cut your brain off. Now, this is what neuroscientists say. They study people who speak in tongues. They say when they speak in tongues, their brain shuts down the emotional part. And the Bible says that when I pray, I do not pray. When I pray in tongues, I do not pray with my natural mind. It skips. It goes from this mind. It bypasses the natural mind and comes out of your mouth. So I do, the only answer I can tell you is I have abandoned myself. I didn't think of how do I do it? What words should I pick out? I worshiped. I just put my hands to the heavens. And I went around this room with these young people. And I just laid hands on them and I'm speaking in tongues and I'm just laying hands on them and they're falling in the floor boom, 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 boom. tongues coming out now they speak Portuguese and I speak English but in an instant we all spoke the same language in an instant heaven was created in an instant the language barrier was gone in an instant we moved into the spiritual dimension and in an instant we saw miracles breaking out and when we left if you can hear me for a second when we left they said that they went into the streets and pulled sick people off the curb and went into hospital rooms and laid hands on folks and they got out of the beds. Why? Because their mind was healthy again. They saw people as how God made them. They prayed in tongues all the time and they were not confused by the distractions of the world. Can I get any help up in here? Because I'm working hard for these amens. See, if you felt what I felt when the Holy Ghost comes on a room, if you knew what I knew, you forget how you look, you forget how you're dressed, you forget how much your tennis shoes cost, and you give God a praise because I worship in the Spirit. I pray in the Spirit. I'm set free when I speak in tongues. So that's all I can say, and there's nothing I need to do for you to get it. It's a gift that comes to the body of Christ, but it is a powerful thing for you to understand. So we'll leave with this, 1137. Close your eyes, throw your hands in the air. Miss Tisha, play as strongly as you can. I want to fill this room with some sound. And this is what I want you to do. If you pray in tongues, I want you to just lift your tongues to heaven, and I want you to just pray in the Spirit for a few minutes right now. If you don't, I want you to just say, Lord, I receive it right now, and then just let it flow from your belly. From your belly, not your brain. I hear the Lord saying, I'm releasing a new dimension of power over this city, and you are going to carry my power. You are going to carry my power. You are going to carry my power as you fellowship with the Holy Ghost. Come on, just keep it up. Just talk to him. It's very easy. Let the Holy Ghost pray through you, sing through you. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Come on, step back into heaven right there. Step back into heaven. Let that native language come back into your mind. God, I thank you for a download right now. A download of tongues for those who are waiting on this. A download, Lord. An activation of this gift in the name of Jesus, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we praise your name. We praise your name.
Yeah, come on. You're not waiting on me. When you pray in tongues, time disappears. Your body gets healthy. You just went to a different dimension of thinking. Your vision gets clearer. You have to learn how to do this, church. How do you do it? Just connect with the Holy. You got to abandon your natural mind. You got to say, I don't know. You probably feel it boiling in here, but you're afraid to look foolish. And I'm telling you, just let your mouth go. Just let your tongue go. Just let it go. It's going to sound like foolishness to your brain, but your spirit is connected to the Holy Ghost. Some people are receiving their languages today. Receiving your own at home. I need you to do that right there. Throw your hands up and just receive it right there. Thank you, Lord. We walk in the signs, the wonders, and the miracles of the kingdom of God. In every place that we go, God, new power is released. New power is released. This is a turning point in our city. This is a turning point in our nation when this church got back to speaking in its heavenly language. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise. The more you do it, the stronger it gets. The more you do it, the stronger it gets. Boy, the more you pray, the stronger you feel physically. The more you pray in tongues, the stronger you feel physically. Hallelujah. I'm going to shut it down in a minute. I'm going to let you finish because you, somebody all needed to get back to this because you ain't been doing it in a while because you've been talking in your understanding about what you are fearing in the news. But I want the news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. The Holy Ghost is reporting to you that there is a different future for you. Will you not know it? Will you not understand it? You got to understand it spiritually. You got to speak it spiritually in the name of Jesus. We got to be a church not ashamed to let all of the gifts out, to let all of the healing out, to let the native language of the kingdom of God. The, see, the people need to hear you sounding like this because even though they don't understand it, they know that language is not from earth. They know that language is not from earth. Hallelujah. 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 God, we give you praise. May the blind see. May the deaf hear. May the lame walk. May those who are in confusion and worry and anxiety. You can't be worried and pray in tongues. Your brain cannot do both. You can't, be, you can't be filled with anxiety if you're praying in tongues. Your brain cannot speak two languages at the same time. I'm telling you, you cannot, you cannot live in this worry-filled world if you can pray in tongues. You can't see people the same if you pray in tongues. What happened to this gift? What happened to our attention on the Holy Spirit? What happened to our gospel where we keep this out of it? You hear that? If you're new today, I'm very sorry. Please give us another chance next week. But we, we need to pray like this. We need praying like this. We need people in our world that know how to pray in their native language because the world is confusing Sometimes you don't know what to pray. And the Bible says, when you don't know what to pray, pray in tongues. And he'll help you pray. When the Holy Spirit is guiding your prayer, it won't be in English. Or it won't be in Spanish or whatever language you speak easily. It's going to be in God's language. Woo, hallelujah. Man. You see what happens now we're praying in tongues. The presence of God is just filling this place. You're causing the kingdom of God to manifest things right here. I wouldn't be surprised if you go home and see things that you've been working on a long time. 
all of a sudden turned around. Why? Because you're praying different now. And you can sing in it. Have you ever sang a song and a melody and it didn't have words to it, but it was just a, a tongue that came out? You can sing in tongues. You can pray in tongues. You can talk in tongues. You edify yourself and you can edify those who can get an interpretation of it. And, and the Holy Ghost will interpret it to you so you can pray for interpretation. Lord, what, what am I saying? Give me the instruction that I just prayed. And he'll break it down. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay, okay. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't offend anyone with that. It's been a long time since I heard people even talk about this. I haven't heard churches still giving people the five steps to their marriage and the four steps to this and people not praying in tongues. I don't know what kind of guidance we expect to have when we are not connected to that powerful source. I tell you, if you got a hard decision to make, pray in tongues first. I tell you, if you don't know what to do with your kids, pray in tongues first. Because you're going to download something that you couldn't imagine with your mind. But when God's language starts hitting your spirit, it forms a different picture of the reality. Woo. Glory. Well, I'm going to dismiss you. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to dismiss you. Stand on your feet. Hold your hands high in the air. Let me, let me pray for you. This is our treatment for this week. So I want you to pray in tongues. Every time you pray, I want you to start praying in the spirit first. Every time you pray, I want you to pray there first. Your mind is going to get str I'm telling you, you cannot have a mental health issue if you pray in tongues more often. You just, you just cannot. You just simply cannot because you are going to be touching and fellowshipping with the governor of heaven. And he is going to destroy all those lies that you believe that was weighing you down. It's going to change. The world is too educated with AI and VR, and that's why we're not praying in tongues. We depend on the technologies too much. Pray in tongues, and you can go to heaven. They want to know about teleporting. That's cute with the little headset thing. We've been praying in tongues and going to different dimensions a long time ago. You could have did that alone. When you pray in tongues, you literally move into a different location. A different environment, a different experience. That's all they're offering you for young people. I'm telling you now, the real thing exists. You don't have to have the fake thing. And, when, and if they come out with a game that you put the headset on, you're going to be like, that's cute. That was nice. It was a fun game. And that will be all it is to you. And it won't hurt you. Then you can play it and be free of it. You know what I mean? So if you know what the real thing is like, the fake thing won't hurt you. But we don't have the real thing. Hallelujah. Pray in tongues this week. And this is what we'll do. We're going to let everybody go. If you wanted to stay here, if you're not done yet, if God is not through with you yet, you can linger for a minute if you want. Everybody else can be dismissed. Um, next week, I'll be back. Um, listen, we're going farther into this. we got to get our health correctly mentally. Father, we bless your people today. And, Lord, I'm just praying this week, as we are going through our last week of our fast, Lord, I just thank you, God, that anything that we need, Lord, Anything that we've been asking you for, Lord, that you would show it to us when we are praying in tongues, that you would correct the things that we have not been able to correct, that you would lift the burdens that we've been trying hard to lift, that you would break through in the ways that we've been asking you to break through, but we haven't had this piece yet. We haven't really gone after it spiritually yet. So, God, I just bless your people today, God, and I just pray put a heaviness on us. I mean a, I mean a spiritual Holy Ghost, a, a glory on us where we cannot help but to speak in our native language. In Jesus' mighty name, I dismiss you.